Hello again, everyone. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, Peter from Rossum. Uh, I am joined here by by Tobias and and Olivia. And uh, in this webinar, uh, we'll be talking about about Rossum and uh, about uh, uh, our mission, about our product, uh, about our technology, both uh, artificial intelligence technology and our uh, great user interface and integration options. Uh, we'll uh, also talk about actual business use cases for Rossum. And uh, then we will, uh, at the end, we'll have a question and answer session uh, where we can discuss any questions you might you might have during uh, during the webinar and discuss discuss more options. Uh, so uh, we expect this to run about uh, uh, about 45 minutes. Uh, so thank uh, thank you again everyone for joining, uh, and uh, let's get in, get into it. Also uh, another note is that uh, this uh, uh, this webinar will be recorded, so it will be available later for watching. Uh, it also means that your questions, if you have any, they'll be also also recorded and, and saved uh, as part of the video. Uh, so at Rossum, what we are going at Rossum, uh, the mission of Rossum itself is creating a world without manual data entry. Uh, what this means for us is uh, when we look at uh, the state of technology in 2018, uh, we are doing so many great things. We are uh, uh, building rockets that can potentially go to Mars. We are building self-driving cars. Uh, we are getting really far with artificial intelligence for machine translation, for computer vision, and for those many things. Uh, but uh, uh, when we look at uh, what's the state of the art in uh, business process automation in back office, uh, we see still open spaces full of people who, 20, uh, who, well, maybe not 24 hours a day, uh, but, uh, but, but for the whole day, they are just typing over information from a paper to a computer form, something that we strongly believe can be automated today, uh, something, something where artificial intelligence uh, can make a huge difference. And uh, that's our mission at Rossum, to make this difference. So, um, at Rossum, uh, uh, we are creating the, we are creating this world. We are eliminating this manual data entry. Something we think that it's so uncreative, so boring work that people should be able to do something different, something more productive. Uh, we do this uh, uh, thanks to artificial intelligence uh, engine that we built uh, for document understanding. Uh, for us, what that means uh, is uh, uh, well uh, at, at Rossum. Uh, we do artificial intelligence research. We are a research company, which is also building an actual product. But we have a we, we have a team of of uh, the, of researchers, uh, of work uh, world class artificial intelligence scientists uh, who are doing original research in new methods uh, in artificial intelligence based on deep learning, on neural networks, on all this all those new features uh, uh, which which enable the recent progress in in artificial intelligence. Um, and document understanding, what it means for us is a ability to extract information, to extract data from what we call semi-structured documents. Uh, the big difference to the traditional approach is uh, that uh, uh, traditional data capture solutions, what they do is uh, they imply a text-based approach. First, they take a page, they convert it to a lot of text, and then they seek patterns in this text. Uh, what we did was uh, was uh, take a completely different approach, and uh, and our technology is actually primarily based on computer vision. That means uh, we use algorithms uh, which look at pages visually. Uh, that means that uh, we perceive a layout first, text later, uh, and that enables us uh, that this enables us uh, to be flexible for a wide variety of layouts. Uh, so uh, this cognitive machine learning approach uh, is completely unique uh, in the data capture space. Uh, and uh, uh, the, because we are perceiving layout first, text later, that actually makes us a excellent, an excellent match for business documents in particular. Because in business documents, uh, uh, if you look at invoices, at statements, at purchase orders, at all those types of documents, uh, uh, it is not a single continuous block of text. 
it is actually scattered a lot of different pieces of text scattered over the page and the layout is an in, extremely important piece of information for determining where uh, where each information is uh, so um, we use this uh, this technology to build our first product based on invoices we'll delve into that in a minute uh, but uh, what we are also building is a super ergonomic user interface for validation and amendments of the uh, extracted data because it turns out that uh, this is also an extremely extremely important point in actually fulfilling our mission making people faster and making the whole process of uh, data data entry more efficient uh, so at this point, I'll uh, hand over the word uh, to my colleague Tobias. Uh, I didn't really introduce myself at the beginning. Uh, occurred to me. Uh, so, 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 so again, I am Petr Baudis. I am uh, one of the founders of Rosso. I am the CTO and the chief AI architect. Uh, and Tobias, uh, he is the head of alliances and partnerships at Rosso. And I give the word to him. Thank you, Peter, and welcome everyone on this first webinar of Rossum. Uh, very pleased to be here today, uh, today with you. And let me just uh, quickly take you uh, and show you what you will get uh, as a customer and a user of Rossum. And I will have just uh, three slides uh, at this moment uh, to, to guide you through. What you see on the, on the screen is um, the actual uh, screen print of the user interface that we are providing to the customers. And we want to show it, show it right up front so that, that we all understand what we're talking about. And we'll be showing a demo of it actually a little bit later today. And so what the user sees, and what we see here, actually, we see the image of the invoice, and we, on the left side, we see the list of the fields that have been extracted. And we see that this invoice is in a language that most of you don't understand. It is in a Slovak language, and we proposed it, chosen for this illustration. And uh, you also see that the paper is a little bit wrinkled. And so this is not a digital PDF. This is actually an image taken by a mobile phone. And you can see essentially that our engine is able to extract data from this document. So, uh, you, you see that uh, from an ergonomic point of view, uh, when the, you, the, the, the field that is highlighted is the invoice number. And you see the blue line that is guiding you, the user eyes, from the field on the left, the area on the invoice where that information came from. And uh, you see also that gray rectangle below, which contains actually the field that the data that has been extracted. And this is an edit box. So the user can actually update this information and they can accept or reject. And what we don't see here, but we will see later is that the user, in case this is needed, can actually choose to take this information from another area on the document. You also see those little eyes next to the to the uh, fields on the left. And those mean actually that we are recommending the user to review those fields because the engine may have extracted the data accurately, but it's not 100% uh, sure about, the, uh, about the, that fact. So it is suggesting a human to review these things. Right? And so this is making the, the, the human interaction uh, extremely ergonomic. This is what we have seen at, at our customers, and I'll talk about that as well. The other thing is that I want to illustrate on this one is uh, going back to what we, Peter was talking about, right? We, as humans, we are not reading this invoice uh, as a page. And and uh, we are looking at it, I mean, even those those of you that don't understand this language are perhaps very well able to tell where that invoice number is, you know, where this uh, where this field is pointing to, but you can also tell most likely many other things, right? You can tell you can tell tell where is the supply, where is the bank account number. You can perhaps even figure out the, the due date, and obviously you will figure out the amount to be paid. So even without understanding the language, you as a human you are able to to pretty much extract the information from the invoice. And our engine has a very similar capability. Right? If we show it the languages which the engine has not been in, exposed to before, it is able to find with reasonable likelihood and accuracy many of the fields already, even though it didn't see that language before. 
So it has this generalization capability, and this is the true power of AI in the hands of a, of a human user in this case, right? Because it helps the user to be extremely ergonomic and and pro productive in in using in actually extracting the data from the invoice. So, so what is happening here is essentially that we really have a solution that enables what I call a true human machine collaboration. And together, the, the human is obviously the human that is doing the job today, but the machine has the two components, right? It has the extraction engine and it has the user interface that is, uh, that is helping the, the human user actually to work with the extracted data and to work with the document from which the data are being taken and to produce a quality result. We are now at a stage where our customers achieve 98% per field accuracy. And they can see up to 60% of their invoices automated, which means that there is no human re review required for those invoices. There's 100% accuracy and confidence uh, on those invoices. And the remaining 40% invoices may require human review and maybe some data edits, like we have seen in the previous example, right? The, the, the fields with that I icon. It doesn't mean that the data is wrong, but it doesn't mean that this needs human attention to make sure that the data has been extracted correctly. And on those, we achieve 98%, right? So, so as a result, as a result, uh, the, the, using this in this user interface, actually, people are five times five times faster than entering the data just from the paper into the computer because of the of the features that we have shown to you. And there are a little bit more of the features that we haven't even seen on this on this quick uh, screenshot. So they are five times as you faster on this document that they are displayed. And if you combine the accuracy with this user interface, it means we get you know 10x productivity improvement. So which means that a user that today is typically processing 2,000 invoices per month in a completely manual mode, this is a standard benchmark that, that we have seen, uh, can process up to 10,000 invoices per month suddenly. Right. So this is what you get actually by using our technology. The other thing is essentially because of the, of the nature of the solution, we don't need any templates. The system comes pre-trained. It's free trained on the model that has 30K invoices in it. And the model is shared by all the customers. And this is why this is, this is, this is day, working from the day one. And all customers are obviously contributing to the model as they are using it. And we are choosing some of those invoices from production to improve our training model and training data set for the modeling. What we see typically is that from the day one, the accuracy is between 80 85% without the templates, without ever seeing the invoices of a specific customer. And it's growing to the 95% plus range over the first one to three months as the system learns from the customer specific invoices. The solution is uh, very well suitable for integration for into invoice automation solutions. Actually, it is built for integration because it, if we would like to reduce the, the manual labor associated with this uh, um, document processing, we need to make it part of some automated workflow. So, so it could be uh, tools like uh, RPA, like UiPath or Blue Prism, or it could be a DMS system like Box, for example. We have created some sample integration codes for UiPath, the same for Blue Prism. We have a code available in Python and several other programming languages using our APIs. And all that has been open source and is available for you to use and to build your automations upon, just to make it really easy and fast to, to onboard. We have our integrators that are now working with us and they are able to integrate the, the Rossum solution into the uh, automation workflow in less than, than three days, typically actually in less than one day, just for the integration itself. And, um, and our models uh, are not static and our engine is not static. We are actually updating our core uh, extraction engine on a regular basis. And the model 
is updated at least on a weekly basis. So, so the customers are actually seeing a continuous improvement in the, in the engine performance and also in the features that it provides. Um, so how, how does that work actually, right? So on a, in a really simple, a simple, really simple scenario is essentially that uh, uh, the customer submits the invoices, scans or PDFs to our engine. And this submission is be either by email or it could be by an API. And this could be driven from a robot or from some other workflow engine. And then essentially uh, the system makes a decision if the data need validation or not. And the decision is based on some rules that are agreed with, with you as a customer before, right? essentially on the thresholds or the fields. And if, this, if there is no validation needed, so 100% of data extracted and confidence levels are high, we essentially ex, uh, export the data in a structured format, which can be then used directly uh, uh, for loading in the accounting systems or for further workflow, uh, workflow processing, like for approval workflow, for example. Or if the, need, if the field needs validation, it will go into the UI, the user will log in, and the user will see the list of the invoices that the user needs to work on, will process each invoice in turn, and, and essentially export the invoices uh, for, for the extraction uh, to, be, to be provided to, to for the processing. So it's a really simple scenario. Obviously, our APIs are more sophisticated than that. We can provide for some uh, bi-directional communication with the APIs during the processing to enable for the validations and data enrichment by, from the system, not only by the humans. Uh, but obviously, this we will not discuss today. This could be a subject of another technical webinar, for example. And back to the people. To be there. <laughs> uh, thank you, Tobias. Uh, so um, let me talk a bit more about uh, Rossum's approach uh, to how how can we make this happen? How can we make uh, make this productivity boost that Tobias mentioned happen? Uh, thanks to the accuracy and the user interface, and how can we uh, make it happen that it really can take just one day? To implement the, the, to to implement this, you have tried that uh, that figure, even though uh, the current values are typically much larger for the traditional solutions uh, that you might be used to. So, uh, Rossum's technical technical approach, the technology, is based on the fact that we really read invoices uh, like a human in a human inspired way, not like a page in a book. So. Uh, this is this touches again to the to the to the to the point of uh, looking at the page visually. Um, well, when you are when you want to to capture information uh, from, from 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 documents, uh, your holy grail, what you really want to strive for, is uh, is uh, automated capture uh, of data uh, from a wide variety of layouts uh, without the configuration overhead. Uh, because uh, the configuration overhead, which is the which is the current way, uh, it really doesn't scale for large volumes and for universal use cases. So, if you right now would like to deploy and use a traditional OCR solution uh, with the, and and the so-called intelligent data capture uh, currently on the market, uh, it doesn't really work that way. You always need to go. You need to look at uh, the spectrum of invoices you want to capture information from. And for each different layout, you need to configure some templates, some rules in practice to capture the information. Of course, uh, uh, this is because the AI component is really essentially, essentially missing in the current solutions. So if you look at the right, uh, there is so much variation that uh, uh, a simple approach to automation, uh, where you are just trying to implement specific rules, specific algorithms uh, to, for example, recognize the amount due, uh, it cannot really tackle with the real world variety uh, of, uh, of invoices. So uh, this brings several issues in practice. Uh, 
uh, one, one of them is that it's just so much high effort and so much cost. To, uh, to to implement this in practice because you need to go and configure those templates and that's actually an expert work. So you need to get some consultants who are familiar with the system to do and so on. Uh, the other problem is even if you go uh, go into this and but by the, by, uh, by the way, just the need of this effort disqualifies a lot of organizations who would really benefit from this because they just cannot, cannot spend the effort. Uh, but even if you go through this effort, you are typically left with a long tail of different varying invoices uh, that are just impossible to capture because it doesn't really pay off to make templates for those. So uh, if you have two invoices a month with some rare layout, you aren't gonna, you are just gonna say, okay, this is this is fine to to transcribe manually. But in practice. You, uh, this may mean that you are covering just 30%, maybe if you are lucky then 60% or 70% of, of, uh, of all invoices you are receiving, but there is always a huge chunk of invoices left for which you have no automation solution at all. Uh, so at Rossum, well, Rossum, uh, we founded at Rossum as uh, actually uh, uh, artificial intelligence scientists. Uh, who are working on some state-of-the-art scientific research, uh, publishing pap uh, papers about deep learning methods and artificial intelligence, and uh, we developed some 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 very interesting technology, and we are looking at the potential use cases for this technology. And when we actually looked at the current state of of, uh, of data capture, we were really we are actually horrified. We think that uh, uh, that the current that, that, that the, the current approaches they are just wrong from our perspective uh, of uh, of the artificial uh, of the current artificial intelligence methods. And um, when we went uh, and we uh, well basically basically uh, uh, our perspective because we are coming into data capture from outside of data capture. We are coming from artificial intelligence research. And that gave us a fresh viewpoint, fresh perspective that, that allowed us to completely rethink, uh, rethink the way that we are approaching this problem. And by uh, using deep learning, well, some people might use deep learning, but they are just trying to bolt on deep learning to their existing pipelines and just, uh, just improve some of the small components that they are using. But uh, uh, we went and uh, with deep learning under our belt in our toolkit, we essentially designed a complete new uh, pipeline for data capture from scratch based on this. And uh, by using deep learning, what this, the advantages are that uh, deep learning based systems, uh, they are, uh, they are self, uh, self configurating essentially. Uh, we don't really do configuration in deep learning systems, like going through specific cases and explaining to the system, okay, in case you see this, do that and so on. You, we do not do that at all. We instead we use training and training. What it means is that we just show the system a lot of examples with the correct answers in those examples. So in our cases, we just show the system a lot of invoices which were already captured, perhaps by humans, uh, and we show them those examples. And the system figures out all the rules by itself, and it does this using neural networks, many layers of uh, of of. Uh, uh, algebraic computation essentially and uh, an interesting property of those deep learning systems is uh, that um, it is able to generalize so at some point to uh, it has seen so many different layouts that instead of memorizing the rules within each layout uh, it's um, it's uh, the system finds a better solution to be able to capture the information and that solution is finding some more abstract rules some more abstract concepts which kind of uh, govern how how layouts in in business documents how they even work in a general general sense so it uh, it uh, gains uh, some sort of understand more abstract understanding of, of layouts in business documents and that allows us uh, to generalize and be able to capture information even from new layouts that it has never seen before so uh, thanks to this uh, we were able to uh, to provide provide the usage experience which is set up less that means that means it's really easy really fast to uh, to implement 
and it has uh, it has high accuracy from the very beginning thanks to this generalization and thanks just to the training because the system has seen so many invoices already um, let me just take a brief look at how, how our machine learning how our cognitive pipeline uh, how does it work um, because uh, with the traditional systems what you are doing is uh, you are uh, first you convert the whole page to a text and then in the text you are applying some rules uh, maybe you might even apply machine learning to this text to extract some information but the layout information is really difficult to capture in this kind of system uh, instead uh, when we say we look at, at the page like a human does what does that mean in practice uh, it means that um, well, as a human, when you, uh, when you look at an invoice for the first time, what you certainly do not do is start at the top left corner and read the whole thing line by line, letter by letter. Instead, if you need to find some information, you look at the invoice as a whole. Your, your eyes, they skim, skim around the invoice a little. Uh, they try to figure out some key points like uh, what points to focus on, what really to, uh, the, to read more carefully. And we call this skim reading, and we actually do the very same thing. So we have a very special neural networks uh, which uh, uh, do not do the traditional OCR of converting the page to a sequence of letters, but instead they decide for each different place on the invoice whether there is a letter somewhere around that. So a bit more fuzzy information, maybe a bit less precise information, but uh, this actually allows us to deal even with relatively bad quality scans and it allows us uh, to build a sort of intuition to the system regarding what is, uh, what is it reading. And uh, this allows us uh, to use uh, our own method uh, for data localization, which is the second step in our pipeline. We actually, uh, the, the algorithms that we are using, uh, they are a, a similar algorithm that, for example, self-driving cars are using to identify uh, different concepts uh, in, in, in a scene. So uh, with a self-driving car, you, if you have a picture, you need to decide, okay, where on this picture is, is a sidewalk, where is a pedestrian, other cars, and so on. And we do this, we use a very similar neural networks uh, to, uh, to, to look at a page and decide for different pieces of the page, what kind of information is there? Is that an invoice number? Is it a date? Or is it just an extra text? which doesn't really, isn't really relevant and so on. And then once we localize this information using this neural network, we do the last step, the, pre uh, the, the precise reading. And at that point, we uh, really focus on that particular spot on, on an invoice when we identify the, 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 the field location. And then we do a super precise letter by letter OCR. Of, of this of this small spot but at this point we just have a small small spot and that allows us to reach a very high accuracy uh, because uh, it's uh, unlikely that we are gonna miss a letter uh, and it's just ju just a small spot and and that allows us to get a lot of training data and uh, and uh, uh, be able to read information this way um, so so far, I talked about the artificial intelligence, and that's uh, like uh, really the the part that is uh, that sounds super interesting, and uh, is well most of our uh, most of our team is actually working on this artificial intelligence and improving it. But uh, for from a product standpoint, actually, what we found equally equally uh, important is having a great verification interface. A great user interface for verifying the captured information and that is to enable this human plus machine collaboration we do not shy away from the fact that there is a small percentage of mistakes uh, it just happens sometimes the scan is is bad sometimes the information is just ambiguous and it's impossible to tell without extra context what's correct uh, sometimes uh, sometimes you are just so sensitive about accuracy that you really, really want to verify everything uh, so that's why we built a verification interface and we really found it integral to the, to, to the user experience and to, to speeding up the process. Uh, so if I uh, show a short video, uh, just, just, just how it feels like to use the user interface, essentially uh, uh, 
to make uh, the, the, uh, we really strive to make the user experience as smooth as possible and um, basically to minimize the time uh, a user needs to verify a single field. So uh, we show the OCR results right next to the place on the page where the information is. So by a single glance, even for longer numbers, you can tell whether everything is correct or not. You can just, uh, if something, maybe, maybe if we missed some field, you can just click once on the appropriate page, uh, on the uh, appropriate place on the page uh, to capture the information. You can do not, still do not need to type anything over and so on. And we really optimize this to be as streamlined as possible. And it turns out that like 50% uh, of the success of those projects is having the having having the great artificial intelligence, uh, but it then it's really essential to also have a great user interface to make this really work in practice. So uh, that was about the technology of, of Rossum, and for for the last part before the Q and Q and A session, I'll hand my uh, hand the word back to Tobias to talk about uh, to talk about uh, uh, how it, how is this done in the real world. Thank you, Pinter. And uh, so I want to share with you uh, briefly one case study that we have that is related to a Rossum implementation at a beer manufacturing company. And we have been very pleased that we were able to actually help them. Uh, uh, this is actually um, showing the true, it's, it's con in, the, in the context of not only Rossum, but also with the robotics. So, so it will be a human plus the robot plus Rossum working together to, uh, to automate the invoice processing. I will, I will go through the situation at a client that was there when, when we came essentially, what were the results? And I will talk briefly about the solution so that you get an idea what it is actually that is in place. So the, the customer is Mosin Course. So, uh, they had an RPA program in place already. So they had some experience uh, with the RPA. They are using a Blue Prism robot, the, the Blue Prism robot, and EY is their RPA integrator. And invoice processing was one of the areas that was really high on their radar for automation because it was completely manual process. So, so it was a manual work, uh, very tedious, and the automation potential was, was great. And their objective essentially is to, as much as possible, eliminate any manual effort associated with the invoice data entry. The interesting thing is that this whole was done, uh, the, the whole project was done at a very fast pace. It literally took two and a half months since the first contact for, for to the time the solution went live, which was early September actually, or end of August, early September. And out of that one month was actually spent on the technology selection. So the project itself was actually just a month and a half, just to illustrate how, how fast that goes. So what were the results? What are the results as of today, right? I mean, in a one month uh, from, from the go live, we are at 97% accuracy. Obviously, there were no templates. It took uh, the integrator three days to implement Rossum with the RPA, and that including the connection of uh, Rossum with the Blue Prism robot, set up of the fields to be extracted, uh, the deployment of the engine and provisioning of the, the Molson core accounts, user accounts, to be able to access the interface. Uh, so most of the work in the elapsed time actually was spending on actually setting up and configuring the robots, and actually before that on the analysis, and after that on the approvals of this and testing and, and going live. Uh, that is a quite part, uh, quite a large part in the robotic configuration that is related to the workflow management actually of the invoices, which is something that uh, we don't see obviously in the data extraction itself. The customer has been considering another OCR system. So, so they were actually in that one month that I have talked about, they were making a selection of um, OCR versus robot versus Rossum solution. And they've essentially chosen uh, us because, uh, because of the fact that there were no templates needed and the speed and cost of the deployment that I have just illustrated. And these were actually key decision factors for them. They really wanted to go live fast. They didn't want to spend fortune. They didn't want to spend effort on setting up the templates and rules. So 
So how does the solution look like actually, or what is the situation now? Uh, in terms of the invoice population, 80% of the invoices are coming uh, by email as digital, digital PDFs, 20% are, are still paper-based and they need to be scanned. And this is all combined into a single input stream uh, that is then managed by the robot. And the robot is actually submitting those uh, invoices by email to our engine. The extracted data, the 22 fields, are returned in a CSV. There is this human uh, collaboration aspect. They are still validating some of the invoices in the UI, but their ambition really is, you know, and they are pushing us to, to improve the accuracy and confidence levels so that they can uh, kind of like cut off the last uh, column or box, if possible. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's their aim. They do the validation against the PO using the extracted data, and then they have, a, as I said, a complex approval, approval workflow uh, you, that is managed by the, by the robots. Ultimately, the robot will post the invoice uh, to the SAP inco incoming invoices ledger, and they will do the accounting treatment in SAP. So all the GL coding will be happening in SAP. I'm just saying that because we also have another customer in a very similar setup. They are using robotics, they are using SAP, uh, but actually they have chosen to do the accounting treatment in Rossum. And so we have actually added the, the GL coding fields for them into the Rossum. And so while they are already looking at the invoice for the verification, they are already adding these GL treatments. And then the robot is just taking those data and manage it, the direct posting into the, actually the account, the, the GL in, in SAP. So, so I think this gives an idea what is kind of the range of options so, uh, when you are making kind of a solution decisions as what will be allocated, how the work will be allocated between the robot and Rossum, for example, and SAP and the human, right? And I think this is uh, for the case study yeah, uh, maybe uh, just uh, one point to what you mentioned the last. Um, uh, in the most successful work for, uh, deployments, uh, what we really see as, as uh, one of the keys to uh, reduce the human touch of invoices to make the processing as touchless as possible is to really um, uh, set up the process so that the human sees, so that the human sees the invoice only once. So uh, what we one see, touch, yes. yeah, exactly. So what we see a lot is adding also accounting information, GL coding, uh, cost centers, and so on, to uh, add it to our, uh, to our user interface for uh, where we do the verification. And at that point, they see the invoice as the main part of the screen, and they can easily add all this extra information. No need to come back to it again uh, within another process. So uh, uh, that's uh, for the main part of the webinar. Uh, uh, I think I think our my message is that uh, you can free up people from manual data uh, entry of invoices, and you can do that instantly. Uh, so um, uh, I think if we have any questions, uh, this is the time to ask them. To open the uh, yeah. So. Uh, or you can type the questions into the chat box. So as yeah. Well. So so uh, I I think that's the best way. Uh, uh, you can uh, within within go to meeting you can open the chat window and you can ask the questions so far we just had one one request to make some of the presenters sorry about that but uh... <laughs> so so if you have any questions um, let's uh, give uh, one minute to to type them in or if you want uh, to to voice the question type the message that you would like to be unmuted and we'll unmute you yeah, so um, we have a couple of questions already. Uh, so let's start with a few. Uh, I think we have something like 10 minutes for question or something. Yeah. yeah. So um, the first question is if uh, Rossum stores uh, uh, the invoices processed, uh, processed uh, by its engine. Uh, yeah, that's an excellent question. And uh, it, uh, by default, yes, uh, we store part of, the, part of those invoices uh, for training. Uh, for in order for the system to get better and better, we need to sample sample some subset of invoices you are sending to us, 
and uh, we need to store those uh, for further training. Uh, this is always a flexible option. So if you would prefer uh, the learning curve to be maybe slower, maybe you are fine with that, but you are really sensitive about archival of your information, that's always possible to arrange. Uh, so it uh, then is up to, uh, up to uh, a precise negotiation of, uh, of the trade-offs. Um, yeah, we have a lot of questions. So let's see uh, how many of them do we, do we, do we manage. Um, so then the next question uh, is, uh, okay, the next question is uh, if uh, Rossum also is stressed in voice line items. And <laughs> uh, yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, so we have invoice uh, extraction capability in our verification interface. So you can capture invoices, invoices there. We also have, uh, which is still, uh, 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 sorry, sorry, uh, capture line items there. Uh, so compared to manual data entry, it's still way better thanks to the one click capture and so on. We also have a functionality that for simple tables, uh, it's enough to capture just the first line and then you can sort of unroll for the rest of the table according to columns. Uh, so uh, so for uh, with many tables, you can rapidly capture this way. Of course, uh, we also st we also um, uh, make a lot of are making a lot of progress to fully automated uh, data capture of invoices, and uh, that's something where we expect uh, some news uh, pretty soon. Uh, but uh, but it's still not released to the public uh, to the public version of the system. Just to add for this current feature, what it means essentially that uh, you as a customer need to specify which are the columns. Uh, column labels, right? What are the fields that you would like to get from those line items? And we mm -hmm. need to set it up for you so that you can actually then use it uh, in our UI. And in the human machine collaboration with the, hum with the, with the assistance of the machine, people are able to, to manage this extraction and to achieve good productivity gains again. Mm -hmm. um, the next question is, uh... Uh, Jan is asking uh, when will new languages be added and whether the system will be language agnostic in the end. Uh, so we are actually, uh, uh, the, the support for new languages is actually improving very rapidly. So we have a couple of languages where we have, we, are, we announced official support. Uh, but uh, even if you try to submit an invoice in a different language, what we see is a pretty high accuracy thanks to the generalization capability that we talked uh, talked about. And uh, uh, we, have, we have a couple of languages uh, which are slated for official support again relatively soon, but we are essentially adding languages as we go and also making the, the, the system more flexible to different languages simply by making our training set more diverse all the time. Uh, so uh, even if your invoice is not in English uh, or in German or in Czech, uh, for example, if you submit in a Swedish invoice, even if it's not uh, not an official uh, officially supported language, you will also typically see uh, very good results, and those results are gonna be better month by month. Um, so uh, another question is. Um, uh, if uh, we can split documents containing multiple invoices into separate documents uh, and process them. And uh, yeah, that's a, that's also an excellent question and uh, some, some, uh, a question we see time by time. And uh, uh, right now, uh, the, we, we ask you to submit invoices uh, as separate documents, but actually we have uh, uh, some functionality in the work uh, to enable this, uh, to, to to enable this, uh, right now uh, uh, we are planning to, to to support some separators. So you essentially you can scan then a batch of invoices separated by special pieces of paper as separators, and and then the system automatically splits the invoices. And we of course longer term we plan to improve this functionality to make it even more automatic, even easier to do. So. Uh, uh, Pavel asks uh, that in order to train such an elaborate system, you'll need a lot of data. Yes, we do. Uh, how do you handle user-sensitive information security? And what about GDPR? Uh, so uh, GDPR, of course, uh, uh, is an important consideration. 
Um, our data processing happens in Europe, so it's something that we definitely care about and we make sure that we are GDPR compliant. What this means in practice, uh, actually on most types of invoices, we see a lot of, uh, we see very little uh, personal information. Actually, most of the information is of a business character. And even if it's, uh, for example, a freelancer making an invoice, uh, our, our lawyers tell us that this is not necessarily personal information, but more of a business information. So uh, uh, in that light and in the light that we are not aggregating the information from the invoices in any way, we aren't building any databases of, uh, uh, of this character, uh, it's uh, our lawyers tell us that that's fine, and we of course secure the data. And uh, from the point of uh, of view of GDPR, uh, that uh, that is enough to to, to be GDPR compliant. Um, so then, Evan asks uh, if we have to interface uh, to, to to inference certain information like vendor identification or service information from data in the invoice. Is this possible? If yes, then is it a part of initial setup done by Rossum team? Uh, do you understand the question? It's, I it's don't know, but, but I think is it? I think it's related to the fact that if there is some information extracted from the invoice and it needs to be, for example, validated against the database, uh, this is what I have described. Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. This is Oven. Exactly, that's what I mean. So let's say if I have to inference, uh, I have three, four details like a name of a vendor, address information, city information. From these three information, if I have to get to which vendor it is exactly, I could have two vendors in the same city. But still, yeah. there will be address. So you have two options essentially, right? One is essentially to build kind of a custom logic behind the the Alice, the, the 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 fields, which you see in the UI, uh, which uh, we can do or we can enable you to do it actually. Or if you are using something like the robot, you can actually use this bidirectional API that I was talking about that earlier. And essentially, so you can get the information before it's shown to the user and you can do this, uh, whatever fuzzy matching that you would like to do uh, in your system using the robot or anything else. And then you can kind of uh, pro propagate that uh, decision already into the user interface. Essentially. So you can be showing the correct uh, decision to the user. So that's the mechanism. There are two mechanisms, at least, how to achieve this thing. All right. Uh, what else? There's a processing speed per document on average. Uh, so uh, actually, to be completely honest, uh, the current system is not optimized for speed. We optimize for accuracy at this point, uh, because a lot of the use cases that we see, they are more batch oriented. So as long as we uh, uh, maintain a high throughput, of the system, uh, the speed of a single document isn't very important for a lot of the customers. That's why we so far focus on focus on uh, on accuracy. So the current processing speed is approximately 30 to 40 seconds per page. Uh, for select customers, if speed is an important consideration, we can talk about speeding that uh, speeding that up. It has some cost implications. So talk to us if this sounds like a problem to you. And uh, overall, I expect the speed to get better as we are able to give more focus to it uh, during our development. Right. So uh, I think there are some questions about the cost per invoice. This is something we don't want to discuss, you know, on this call today. If you have a specific need for a quotation, just come back to us. Our contacts are below on the screen. Uh, because it depends on a lot of factors, essentially, yeah, yeah. the volume and uh, the environment. And well, so. actually, the requirements, right? Yeah. So, so we need to understand more. But we generally price per invoice, not yes. per page, not per instance, not per user. Generally, it's per invoice. This is what I can tell you. And this is a competitive pricing compared to the OCR solution. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else? Can we integrate the uh, Rossum invoice output with Alfresco workflow and later once approved make an invoice entry in Epicor ERP? Yes, you can. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, the Ellie system is actually uh, we try to build it uh, build this as open as possible. So all the integrations components, the, the like the uh, examples of code and everything, we we are working on uh, open sourcing everything that we, that we have from the uh, from the integration uh, standpoint. 
uh, and uh, we have a set, set of several APIs that you can use to easily build your own integration component. And if you need to know more information about the integration, just send us an email and we will share with you a, a document that describes the integration and links you to the to the API documentation so that you can understand. And you can also see the examples of the integration code that we have already created. That I have talked about. If you if you go to our blog on our web pages, you can see the, some examples of the code there. Mm -hmm. uh, how does the system let me just read those, right? How does the system <laughs> scale against images with perspective distortion? Mobile photos, for example, or rotated image images? I think we have shown an example in the beginning uh, uh, of a slight distortion. Obviously, the distortion can be much bigger than that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah, the, uh, well, honestly, the system is trained on scanned pages. Uh, so, uh, it's, uh, we see it as a more of a proof of the generalization ability that even though it was always trained on just on scanned, uh, scanned pages, it is able to also capture information from a lot of uh, photos taken by cell phone, which are distorted and everything. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, but currently the system is optimized for scanned documents. For, so for cell phone uh, photos, uh, which contain those distortions and everything, um, well, the users uh, need to be a bit careful uh, so that the distortion isn't too big. Okay, so I think we have two more questions left. Uh, can it handle invoices that are spread on two pages, uh, line items on page two and summary on page one? We support multi-page invoices in general, and I think yeah. the current the limit used to be 16 pages. Now I think it's 25. Yeah, yes. Yeah, if you have specific requirements for more pages, then you need to contact us. This this can be lifted. It's more a memory management consideration. Yeah, for us right. to manage just, the just to optimize mm -hmm. the, the memory management. Right? Yeah. Uh, how many extractions uh, and document types uh, do you support or plan to? So I think this is about the number of fields, right? So yeah. We have a standard set of 25 plus fields that mm -hmm. we extract and you can get that list from us if you want to. We, in, in terms of the document types, we support invoices and credit notes. Uh, at this moment, um, we will be expanding to other types of documents uh, like, uh, like purchase orders or sales orders, for example. Uh, pay slips. We have have some discussions with some people that are looking into this. Uh, so this will be a consideration. Uh, we are building the pipeline essentially for other types of documents uh, as we exactly. speak. So, so the, the long term vision of Rossum is well, we aren't an invoice company. We are an AI research company, which is a very generic technology for kept data capture from a variety of documents. For us, it's more of a matter of a, of, a, of a training set essentially. What documents we train on. And we listen to our customers' feedback regarding that. So, uh, so, so uh, the volume and type of, of, of documents they have is important for us. But long term, uh, we also um, actually we are we are soon launching the first pilot projects for entirely custom types of documents. So if you have a big volume of of a, of a different kind of document and invoice, but we just some similarities to invoices please do get in touch as well because we are interested to learn uh, to learn more about those and we can help with those in principle as well so and i think by the virtue of that we've kind of answered the last question we have a standard set of fields uh, but we have also uh, the ability to add custom fields as we are able to add custom documents the same way we can add the custom fields but obviously you need to talk to us essentially and uh, we have to analyze what the requirement is, what the fields are, can tell you how this will be actually done. I think we are just at time. Yeah, yeah. Time is up. So uh, thank you, thank you everyone for participating for for joining this uh, this uh, this webinar for the, for your participation for your great questions. Um, uh, please stay in touch with us. Uh, uh, if uh, uh, if you need to get in touch with us, uh, we, uh, take a look at some of the emails at the bottom of this slide, or you can just send an email to rossum at rossum.ai for, gener for generic contacts. Um, uh, if uh, we will be doing more webinars in the future, I think, so please subscribe to our newsletter uh, to, to learn more about those. And uh, watch our blog and watch our Twitter for future news about Rossum. Thank you again and have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.